Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Triangle Strategy. So um, I believe that we've completed this chapter. Yeah, looks like it says it's completed. Now we just have to wait and see if we have a part three or if we're going straight into chapter 10. Oh man, so I've been recording this. Um, a lot of these episodes that you've been seeing for like the past week have all been recorded during my spring break. Um, I'm a professor if any of you don't know that. So, I'm supposed to have a break right now, but I still have not have a, had a single day where I did not have to work. And it's disappointing me. I just wanted to play this the entire time, and like, almost two full work days were worked at the beginning of this week, and like, ugh, it's ridiculous. Where's my break? Okay. It, it's nice to be needed. It's, it's nice to, you know, feel important in your job, but... Damn it, I want my break. <laughs> All I want to do is play Triangle Strategy for a couple more days before I go back to the grind, you know? With no choice but to acquiesce to Sorcelay's demands, House Wolffort loads a merchant's cart with contraband salt and sets off across their own homeland in disguise. Through benighted forests and desolate mountains, they forge a path Word of the Staving day. off the assault of thievish bandits and finally reaching Esfrost. Benighted. Upon crossing into new territory, they find themselves surrounded by soldiers clad in black. Expecting yet another skirmish, the Wolfort steal themselves for combat. However, the warriors lower their weapons. Through the mists, an unexpected figure appears. Svarog Esfrost, Lord of Twinsgate and Keeper of his country's borders. Okay, Chapter 10, Part 1, Beneath the Frigid Sky. This is quite the development. My very uncle buying salt outside of the Consortium's purview. The lion's share of the surprise is mine, I assure you. Who would be aiding me in this illicit endeavor but the noble Warforts? Circumstances have caused us to set aside pride for the sake of survival. Of course, I understand. Oft we must travel the only road available to us. And what road has brought you here, Uncle? I cannot imagine you have come with Gustadolf's blessing. What road indeed? My own circumstances have caused me to look outside my humble station to find the means I require. A reckoning is at hand, and I must needs be ready for it. Ooh, that sounds like he uh, doesn't want to tow Gustadolf's line, doesn't it? So basically, he's lining his own pockets so that he can amass more wealth in order to probably raise armies against Gustadolf? Yeah, maybe? Maybe? <sighs> to that end, I must ask. Cool. And pray do not waste my time with mistruths. Do you know who murdered my son? As a matter of fact, we do. No. I'm sorry. The fuck, Saranoa? Why are you doing this? I see. Gustadoff would have me believe that an agent of Glenbrook dealt the fatal blow. That's impossible. Is it? You speak as if you were there, Frederica. She was, as was I. We were with Dragan during his, during his final moments. You were, and yet you do not know who killed him. I will ask once more, and once more only. No need to get who violent. Who murdered my son? We were the only representatives from Glenbrook at the mines that day. The arrow that killed your son was loosed by an Esfrosty soldier. We were attacked and fought back the assault, but they did not flee without a parting gift. Hmm. Your story is convenient, but that alone is no reason to discount it. Besides, it does offer an interesting perspective on the matter. 
Yeah, he doesn't Let trust us say Mr. you Paul. have the truth of the matter. That would mean... Gustadov has been lying through his teeth. That would come as a shock to many, I'm sure. Regardless, nightfall is come. Camp within our gates tonight. Do you believe us? What is there to believe? This meeting never occurred. Now follow me. That guard had a unique uh, sprite, but he didn't have a name. I wonder if he'll become important or if it's just a, you know, just a guy. <laughs> it could just be a guy. <laughs> All right, I don't think we found any new notes. No. All right, but we do need to go to the encampment. We probably have some upgrades we can do. Perhaps some new things to buy. I was really hoping that like after each chapter, one of these would become available. But nope, they're really doling them out slowly, aren't they? Okay, so let's take a look. Um, raise the movement of all allies by two for one turn. I do like that. Three TP to an ally. Honestly, that could come in really handy. It it basically just gives us a free, hey, mage, you're going to be able to do things for two more turns. Especially with most of them costing two TP. Um, it basically does guarantee a two-turn... Um, recharge, you know? I think that's the one I want. Lightwave sounds pretty cool as well. Let's go with Battle Cry, and then next we'll get another Quietus Point. Okay, so we have quite a few veterans at this point. It's kind of interesting that the people we recruit come in as veterans, but like our main party are still like waiting for promotions. I think these three, I guess you're kind of at the top of the list too, but I don't know. You haven't been struggling too much to have enough TP. I mean, obviously if we gave you more TP, then you'd uh, definitely have um, another instance of being able to use your multi hill, um, which is nothing to scoff at. But who needs it the most? You... The abilities we use with you the most usually only cost one, which is nice. You've got a thing that reduces the cost of yours. Especially your three one. We use your abilities a lot as well. I mean, pretty much all of them except for you, I'm like really wanting a promotion right away, but we're not gonna be able to do that. All right, I think, um... Ooh, we'll immediately get heal what ails you. Status ailment, something I've been wanting for a while now. Maybe that's what we should do is look at um, what else can be unlocked here. Grants one TB at the start of, start of a battle. So you actually start with four instead of the three. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Cool. You learn pushback and flash of steel. Having another pushback ability would not be bad. Deal physical damage to any enemies in a straight line of five squares. Ooh, I really like that. It's basically Rush, except we don't have to go to the other side. And it's more powerful. And it damages five squares. Okay, that looks really good. Horizon range. That's really good, too. Focus, I'm guessing, probably increases accuracy. Physical counter's nice. Ooh, 
slumber shot. Oh, I want them all, man. All right, but it's gonna be you. It's time. Prince Roland, let's do this. So he gets a bonus to magic attack and strength. This day shall be ours. Okay, he learned two abilities right off the bat. Spring in your step at level 20. Okay, five more levels for that. Or Saranoa, I can supply your forces with any medicines they may need. Just say the word and it shall be yours. Your soldiers shall know no pain while I'm around. Okay. I thought she was actually going to become a vendor <laughs> for a second there. Is especially grand today. Does that mean that you might have bonus things today that you wouldn't normally have? No, not really. <laughs> okay. Oh, you only have one in stock. Damn, we're gonna start running out of uh, large HP recovery pellets. So if we upgraded your weapon, we'd unlock the ability to do some of these, which might be nice. Okay. Upgrades. So let's just look at. Let's see. It looks like you have something you could learn. Haste duration goes up. Haste effect up. Ooh. Increases jump. I could see that being useful for you. Increase the effect of haste. I think that's a uh, great ability for you. I want those as well. Insult to injury, increase your critical hit rate against enemies with 50% or less HP remaining. Cool. So basically you're just more likely to crit and murder somebody who's uh, low HP. have on this line? What do you need? Silver. I don't think we can buy silver. Last man, a level 15. Wolfort Castle Town Gates. Um, I think I'll wait on this one. Let's not do this one right now. I think our average level is like 12 verging on 13 right now. Is that right? Oh no, we've got several people at 15. I didn't realize. Okay. Yeah, our average looks like it's pretty close to 14 then. She's got a little knife. <laughs> we haven't tried you out yet.
two in quick succession. Costs three. It's expensive. After being questioned about Dragan's murder, Saranoa and the others seek a way to gain Svarog's trust. Back to Twinsgate. Alright, already another uh, Scales of Conviction here. So, that's how it went, eh? Glad you came back to us with your head on your shoulders. Given the lies he's been fed, it couldn't have been easy for Svarog to keep his composure. Still... It will be no easy task to assuage his doubts. I fear it may not be long until he gives into his desire for revenge, justified or not. Perhaps. But I very much had the sense that his opinion of Gustadolf was less than favorable. So long as we share the same enemy, there's a chance to build faith between us. Yep, and we need allies. I had the same intuition. Would that we could lend weight to our claims. There must be something that can sway him. Perhaps a secret will suffice. We have one of great value to the right person. Huh? What are you on about? No. You can't mean... Yeah, what is she talking about? None would rather see the Archduke laid low more than I. Oh, his secret. As Farag knew I still lived, we might find common cause. With the Prince of Glenbrook behind him, his opposition would be justified. The enemy of our enemy, eh? Wish we had more than a feeling to go on. Once this secret is revealed, there will be no turning back. It is a gamble, yes. However, this may be our best and only option to gain support from within Esfrost. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. There is much to consider. I would hear everyone's thoughts on the matter. Do we keep Roland's secret our secret? Or do we trade it for a potential ally? It's certainly dangerous, but I think I'm gonna tell him. Yeah, I think we're gonna tell him. I think we can get him on our side. Lord Svarog's trust, or Roland's safety. Oh, don't worry, he's safe with us no matter what, right? <laughs> And in the next chapter, he gets murdered because of our decision. <laughs> Wouldn't that suck? I must be careful not to reveal anything when deliberating with the others. Perhaps I can gain some insight from the soldiers outside. I saw you, Shiny. Cool, some more enchanting spice. Oh. Hi, kitty. Any other shinies? Oh, yep. Marvels of Norzelia, Volume 7. Perhaps this is a bold claim, but I am nearly certain that everything one would want to know about Norzelia could be learned in the North. Yes, in the Esfrosty Archives, generations of Archdukes pursued knowledge and technology in order to transform the remote duchy into a mighty force to be reckoned with. They gather texts from every corner of the realm, and these archives are the result. The large collection of books and scrolls grows ever larger by the day, rendering organization nigh impossible. Though that means wisdom believed lost to the ages may very well be slumbering among the stacks. Containing the very history of Norzelia itself, the archives are a treasure house of knowledge and potential. The current Archduke Gustadolf has opened the archives to a veritable flood of scholars, allowing all manner of research to be conducted. Who knows what surprising discoveries tomorrow might bring because of this. And I wonder if he found something in there that led him to search out what was ever in this mine. You heading out, my lord? Oh yeah, remember our word of the day, benighted? I looked it up. It means to be in a state of pitiful or contemptible intellectual or moral ignorance, typically owing to a lack of opportunity. Damn, dude. 
It's one hell of a word. Svarog's Guard. Lord Svarog was concerned for Lady Frederica when the Archduke invaded Glenbrook. To see her unharmed has put both him and us soldiers at ease. Yeah, I want to trust this guy. Might I inquire as, as to what brought Lady Frederica and her new house all the way to Twinsgate? Um, no, you shouldn't inquire, actually. We made the journey to protect both our house and people. That is all. Straightforward. True. I surmise such a bold answer means you have nothing to hide, Lord Saranov. I'm beginning to feel like this is more of an interrogation than an innocent questioning. Uh, no, sir. Uh, my sincerest apologies if I made you feel as such. If you truly wish for an answer, ask Lord Svarag himself. I shan't be responding in his stead. But of course. Okay, so we're just, like, barely inside these gates, then. Lord Svarag told us not to announce your visit to the Archduke. Such an edict means he doesn't want others finding out what's happening here. It's suspicious, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, so play it cool, bro. Don't betray your lord now. That masked man with you bears a striking resemblance to the famed Sir Maxwell. Though he may be a rival to the duchy, I respect him deeply as a fellow warrior. But he gives off a much younger air than I thought he would. Okay, hides it. Enviable, isn't it? Sir Maxwell takes greater care of his appearance than one might think. But if he cares so much for his appearance, why does he hide it behind a mask? That is because he wishes not to expose his enemies to any unsightly visage he might show upon defeat. I see, so it is a sign of respect to any who would best him in battle. The Dawnspear is both a gentleman and a soldier. I had always admired Sir Maxwell, but you have given me newfound respect for him. For that, I thank you. <laughs> Alright. Okay, did I miss any shinies? Where's my loot? Oh, look, there's more over here. Can I actually go down there? I think, yeah, looks like I can. Ooh, this might be an interesting map to fight on, huh? We haven't talked to you either. Most of the soldiers stationed here at Twinsgate have worked with Lord Svarog for years. As such, we trust his judgment. No harm will befall you as long as you have his permission to be here. No matter the reason. Also trying to look for shinies. Oh, wait, did I see one there? Or is it below? Nope, it was probably just a piece of snow. Oop, I saw one up there, too. Okay, we'll have to go around to get that, but it's right up here. Lord Svarug was overcome with grief when he heard of his son's murder. Archduke said it was all a plot by Glenbrook to seize control of the Grand Norzellian Mines. I would not be surprised if Lord Svarug begrudged the royal family because of it. Gustadolf claimed that it was King Regna who gave the order to have Lord Dragan slain. But what we saw at the mines that day proves otherwise. How could we get Lord Svarog to believe us? Whatever our path, we must tread carefully. The matter of his son's death is a sensitive one, and any mistake could cost us our lives. Archduke Gustadolf and Lord Svarog sent uh, all the way out. Had Lord Svarog sent all the way out here to Twinsgate. Soldiers like us were likewise forced to the borders alongside him because of that bad blood. 
It seems the duchy is not as united as I expected. Nice. Okay. We got some stuff for the convincing now. Okay, some ranged recovery pellets. Could end up being very useful. Okay, so Frederica Hewitt and Eridor want to keep Roland's identity a secret and enter negotiations with Svarog. And Roland, Benedict, and Gila want to reveal Roland's identity. Anna, once again, is undecided. Okay. I feel like we've been going against Eridor and Frederica a lot lately. Kind of feel bad for them. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have to try and convince him. All right, Hewitt, you first. I... The risk of Prince Roland's secret being revealed grows greater with every telling of it. We have only just succeeded in feigning his death. It would be foolish of us to reveal the truth of it so soon. You're not wrong. But I want to trust this guy. I... I believe we should reveal Roland's identity. Do you truly think it worth risking, uh, worth the risk to reveal the, that Prince Roland lives? Only two options here, huh? We want justice for Lord Dragan, as does Lord Svarog. Showing him that Roland lives may convince him that we had no part to play in his son's murder. That's tenuous at best, if I'm being honest. True, in the absence of more concrete evidence, revealing Prince Roland's identity may be our only option. The risks still weigh on me, but I see now that we stand to both earn Lord Svarog's trust and avenge Lord Dragan by doing so. Might I speak with you further to clarify my own thoughts on the matter? Oop, I just saw another shiny in the back of the room. And? How do you see Lord Svarog? Okay. Yeah, we can provide him a cause. He may also want to overthrow Gustadolf. He is a man who also wishes to overthrow Gustadolf, and those with common enemies make potential allies. Quite true. Perhaps, but this potential ally has been driven out of Twinsgate by his own nephew, and will not hesitate to remind us of the fact. Even so, his involvement in the illegal salt trade is proof enough that his ambition is not diminished. Should revealing Prince Roland's identity persuade him to join us, we may well gain an ally in our fight against the Archduke. I thank you. This talk has brought me clarity at last. Yeah, I'm not sure if we got that one or not. Um, okay. Anna? Revealing Prince Roland's identity may win Lord Svarog's cooperation, but at what cost? Lord Saranoa. I have yet to arrive at a decision. What are your thoughts, Lord Saranoa? I believe we should reveal Roland's identity. So you would reveal Prince Roland's identity? Lord Svarog remains suspicious of the Archduke. He might aid us if we can prove that we did not murder his son. This one's also a pretty good one. Indeed. And you believe earning his trust is worth revealing our closely held secret. Lord Svarag obsesses over the truth behind Lord Dragan's death. Perhaps he seeks revenge. In which case our aims would be aligned, making this a risk worth taking. I see that we may need to be bold if we wish to better our situation. Thank you for your counsel. Yeah, none of these feel like sure things right now. <laughs> Saranoa. I think it would be possible to convince my uncle without revealing Prince Roland's identity. 
I think we should, though. Is there a reason his identity must be revealed? Okay, something we haven't been able to unlock. No, I don't like that one. Lord Sparrow is suspicious of us. We will have to be forthright with him if we are to gain his trust. This one feels like throwing Roland under the bus for restoring Wolfort's power. You know what I mean? I see. My uncle is not a man who would go back on his word. If we tell him the truth, perhaps he will understand. But... However, if my brother, if Gustadoff were to find out, Prince Roland's life will be in danger. It's always in danger, Frederica. Like, we're just, we're adding a little bit more fuel to that fire, but like, all it takes is one person seeing him in that mask and being like, yeah, that's definitely the prince, you know? Perhaps it would be best to exercise caution for now? I need a moment to think. I'm sorry, but my heart still wavers on this matter. Sereno, what is your opinion of my uncle? If he is your uncle, then he is mine as well. I am sure we can come to an understanding. I see. During my time in Esfros, my uncle was... He was the only one who was kind to me. Yeah, I've kind of got the impression that... Um... That he and Dragan were much better to her than her siblings. I believe he felt a kinship with me, as I was also the child of a concubine. He has a cold exterior, but a warm heart. Also the child of a concubine. So Svarog was as well? That's what that implies, right? But those were different times. I cannot help but feel that my uncle has changed since he last lost Dragan. I pray she understands where I stand. I feel better about that one, but still. We haven't had any uh, ending uh, screen that has said, yeah, they may have been swayed. Okay, Aragorn. here's what I think. I know Swarog's not in Gustadolf's corner, but he's as frosty all the same. I can't see him as anything else. You really think we can trust him? I believe we should reveal Roland's identity. Tell me, lad, why you think we should go reveal him that our dear Prince Roland lives? We have no other choice if we wish to convince Lord Swarog that we had not to do with his son's death. Are you joking? Wow, he did not like that, huh? That man's suspicions run deep. There's a chance he won't trust in us even if we do reveal Prince Roland's identity to him. Not only did Svarog not believe us, lad, he accused us of murdering his son. That's no small stain upon us. I want to clear our names as much as you, but we can't just run headlong through this problem. My head aches. I wish there was a clear answer here. And so? I reckon a lord needs a keen eye for a man's character, so how do you see Svarog, lad? Frederica seemed to think him trustworthy when she lived in Esfrost, so I believe he can keep a secret. Hmm. He seemed a finer man than most to my eye. Bit old-fashioned, like yours truly. Don't think he'd have it in him to betray us like the Archduke. Aye, He's but... still a prominent as Frosty, though. I wouldn't drop my guard around him. I've made up my mind. Against all odds, I think I might finally see a way out of this. Indifferent. Yeah, that first one seemed to not convince him in the slightest. The second one seemed to do all right. Maybe. <laughs> well, let's see if we manage to convince anybody. It is time to cast our votes. Do we reveal that it is Roland behind the mask, or do we keep his identity a secret? Approach the scales of conviction with your token at the ready. I wholeheartedly agree. Hey, okay, so we did get her. You've swayed me, Sarah Noah. Let us see if Prince Roland's secret can earn us my uncle's trust. I think with Frederica's word, we stand a good chance. I agree. I believe in you, Lord Saranoa. I cannot be swayed. When I think about Prince Roland's position, I just cannot agree to risking so much. That's fair enough, Hewitt. It's okay. And Eridor's a big no. 
Just can't see it your way. Apologies, lad, but just can't bring myself to expose the prince to such danger. The scales of conviction will illuminate the path we've chosen. The way forward is decided. The only way to win Svarog's trust is to reveal Roland's identity and begin negotiations. It is decided. Svarog shall know the truth of Roland's identity. Benedict, I would ask that you arrange an audience as quickly as possible. Of course, my lord. Beneath a frigid sky complete. Prince Roland of Glenbrook lives. It is a powerful secret that could sway the decisions of the other nations. Knowing this, House Wolfort asks for an audience with Svarog in hopes of divulging that very information and gaining his trust. Part two, a treacherous soul. Who is that referring to? Hopefully not Swarog. Good God. I'm nervous. You must have something of import to tell me. Whatever it is, know that my guard stays. There is something we wish to show you, Lord Svarog, in hopes of earning your trust. <sighs> Prince Roland? They said you perished. Indeed they did. And the rumors will stay that way as long as Gustadolf draws breath. Surely you understand the meaning of this revelation. Indeed I do. Give me time to think it over. Okay, let's check out this side story. A bird arrives, bearing an urgent message for Sikris. Constable, a bird has arrived from our spy at Twinsgate. Oh no, come on. Who's the spy? I've discovered a secret ledger in Svarag's quarters. Alright, the Esfrosti Constable Sikris Diut. The head of Esfrost Constabular Constabulary. Charged with upholding the peace, his honest and orderly conduct has earned Gustadolf's favor. And now they're coming for us. An unscheduled merchant company has arrived. Cargo uncertain. I shall continue my investigation. Okay, so they just think it's the salt smugglers. It may be an illicit shipment of salt. If we can get our hands on both the salt and the ledger, we can expose their crimes. So he already suspects Varog? But we cannot be sure of that just yet, sir. Perhaps we should wait for the next report. No. If we simply sit still, we may lose our only chance of getting that evidence. But Lord Svarog is a powerful man. Even our own formidable forces cannot afford to make a mistake. And it is precisely because he is so powerful that we cannot let these misdeeds go unpunished. I shall assume responsibility for whatever happens. Now, we make for Twinsgate. Yes, sir. All right, that's where our fight's gonna come from then. Oh, 
Okay. So this is where we're going to end this episode. In the next episode, I think we're going to start with that um, uh, mock fight or that uh, mental battle, I think is what they call them in this game. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be starting out with. And then we're going to continue the story and investigation here. So yeah, thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, everybody. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Seventh Son, Louis D, Ivan K, Len, HLLJ, and Jordan and Emily Hill. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.